We're live. Hey, you guys. Welcome to our elite training call. I am here today with Melissa McAllister, um, double 15 star diamond coach, millionaire club um, trainer. We're going to go into all of that, but we're super excited to be able to share with you guys some information to really accelerate your growth, improve your leadership skills today on this beautiful Wednesday. So Melissa, do you just want to introduce yourself for a second and hopefully you guys can all get caught up. I see we don't really have any viewers like yet. So let me just check with the page and make sure everybody else is getting on. So if you want to introduce yourself and then we can get going. You bet. I don't. Can they see me? Yep. Yep. Hi. Um, as Alyssa said when she first saw me, she's like, oh my gosh, you're tan. <laughs> I got a crazy spray tan yesterday for filming, but it's an honor to be here with you guys. And I remember listening to Lindsay and Mindy the first day and Mindy mentioning that nervous excitement to be able to share with you guys some of the best practices that we have in order to help you build your business. And that's what I feel right now. It's that, that exciting nervous energy, just like when I'm about to film. So very excited to be here and thank you for the opportunity to hopefully help you build your business. All right, guys, so the topic we have for you guys is coaching versus mentorship. We're also going to talk to you a little bit about expectations that we set for our team. Now, this is definitely coming from my perspective, um, how I've kind of built a success club culture um, and some of the trainings that I provide my team to help facilitate that along with a duplicatable system. So um, I hope that you guys have your pens and your paper out. I'm going to actually go to screen share now um, so you guys are not going to see us, and hopefully I can get this figured out because – Always had problems, but I'm going to nail it this time. So, um, all right. So let me just go to the screen share and we will get the party started. All right, guys. Okay. So teaching your coaches how to fly. Like I said, my name is Alyssa Shoemaker. In case you guys don't know, I started coaching uh, three years ago in January. I'm a 15-star diamond coach, elite coach times three, uh, top 10 coach times two, and a success club 10 all-star legend. Um, we're here today with the fabulous Melissa McAllister. This girl is an idol um, to me and to many within the Beachbody community. She's a 15-star diamond coach times two, a six-time elite coach, a four-time top 10 coach, um, SC London for 71 months, 41 cab members, 53 lifetime diamonds, master trainer, Beachbody Talent Team, the Millionaire Club in 2012, the girl does it all. So I am just ex excited to be here to learn from Melissa um, and all the other leaders that have been, been presenting within this last um, two weeks and for the next seven weeks within this group because I just feel like it elevates my own leadership. I learned so much. So I'm super excited for you guys to be here today. Melissa, if you want to kick it off, we'll go to your first slide. Absolutely. Uh Great introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys first um, by asking you a very simple question, and that is how do you define success? And I don't mean your own success, but I want you to imagine if a prospect asked you what it takes to be successful at coaching, what things would you tell them? So think about it really fast. What for you would you have to tell someone who is interested in being as successful as you as a Team Beachbody coach what would you tell them? Do you know what you would say? Right? So think about that. That's really important for you to have a clear definition of what success is for you. Do I have the ability to change these or do you have to? I got it. Next. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll just say hit it. Hit it. <laughs> so for me, I want you guys to know how I define success is I would tell someone is that they have to make their health a priority and they have to use our products, right? They have to use our supplements. It's not just someone who has a healthy lifestyle, but they have to specifically use each body products in order to be healthy. They need to um, engage in trainings. Uh, that's just something that has to be done, whether it's something done through Coach Basics or if they use team training that have been together for them, they have to use the trainings to be successful. They need to um, read their personal development, of course, and they have to network through social media. Now, I have a, a tagline that I always use that um, link providers are liars. <laughs> and I always tell my team that. I know it's a little harsh, but I'm really adamant about them not posting links because if you're just posting links, that's proof that you are not a product 
the product, you're not working out, you're not drinking your Shakeology because you don't have anything to post about. So link providers are liars. You have to be a product of the product and use those products and share the experience that you've had with them. Um, we, I also am, and I'll touch on a little bit more, but um, when it comes to personal development and you talk to somebody about how that's really important, you have to, for them to understand that it's personal development for them. And I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit later, but I think that's really important. People think it's just personal development in general. And I think that's a real um, issue that we have is that um, it's just thrown out there in generalities. And I think personal development has to be very specific. And people have to put themselves out there. And I have a lot of coaches that come to me and they're very uncomfortable with putting their lifestyle out on social media but it's very, very important. And they have to know that maybe they start small and they're just gonna post their dinner, maybe their grocery list or their favorite Shakeology recipe, but they have to start putting themselves out there to be successful in this business. And you can't assume that people know you're a coach because of one single post. Only about 12% of people will see your post when you put it out there, 12%. That's almost a 10th of the people that you want to see it. So you really have to take the time to put posts out there several times a week at different times and different days. So a lot of people, when they think, okay, so I just post about my workout, you know, once a week. No, it needs to be done a lot. And that's how you define success. Success. And I want you guys to know that I am probably, I think, the coach that's coached the longest in this group. And so I really want to speak to you today for longevity. Um, being a coach for seven years, it's it's different than being at that two and three year mark. Seven years is a time that there has to be things that you think of that will keep you focused and successful over a long period of time. So when I'm talking to you today, I want you to know that this is for longevity. So in seven years from now, you're still crushing your goals and you don't get complacent. So you can change the slide. Okay, so what I want to talk to you this morning about is coaching versus mentoring. Now, do you know what the difference between coaching and mentoring is? Do you even know the difference? Is there one in your mind? When you hear those two terms, do you think they're the same thing or different? Do you know which one you are, and how do you know which one that you should be? Now, the truth is, network marketing requires consistently recruiting. Every one of us... 10 will tell you that. With that being said, the time you do spend with your coaches has to be highly effective. Expert leadership requires individuality to the masses. Now that sounds kind of crazy. Individuality to the masses. You can quote me on that. But you are going to have to learn how to coach and or mentor your team into success. So you can go ahead and change the slide, Alyssa. So coaching is task-oriented. You focus on concrete issues like the policies and procedures, success club, what it takes to be emerald, and your power hour. However, mentoring is relationship-oriented. You provide a safe environment for that coach to share how their personal life influences their professional life. Next one. Coaching is short term. You should coach during a GSR, on a team call, or in your groups, but mentoring is long term. It requires time to mentor. Trust must be built so the coach feels secure to share issues that impact their success. Next one. Coaching is performance driven. Coaching, coaching is to help improve a coach's performance. It's very tactile, but mentoring is development driven. The goal is to not only provide business growth, but also character growth. And this is where you as a leader, you lead them to the resources that help them grow. Now what you wanna do is, when you think about your new coaches, uh, I'm sure all of you have a book that comes to mind. I do send out either Compound Effect, Slight Edge or GoPro to my brand new coaches because I think that's a very good get started personal development book. And you probably have one of your favorites as well. But once you start getting into um, 
the whole mentoring, it's different. It's very individual. And your new coaches should have success with doing just the three vital behaviors all by themselves. You need to know that. Your coaches should have success by just following the three vital behaviors. So as I read through these, coaching versus mentoring, I hope you kind of had a little bit of an aha moment as to which you should be. Should I be a coach or should I be a mentor? And the answer is both. If there's one thing I learned from Shaleen, it's that you work with those that show up and dedicate the majority of your time with those that not only show up, but consistently over time. Now with that in mind, you should coach all your new coaches and those who are starting to get their feet wet. Once they have really reached their stride, you start to mentor them. You cannot mentor everyone. Do not try. You need to identify, and you can do the next slide, you need to identify who you need to mentor. I'm going to say that again. Remember, this is longevity. <laughs> I've tried to do it. You cannot mentor everybody. Okay, next slide. So coaching is easy, but mentorship requires leadership. And this is where you learn from your upline and also your own personal development on how to mentor some people. I was asked by a good friend the other day what I felt like was missing when I was in my own personal last mentorship. That was a really good question. And I had to think about it because there were so many takeaways during that mentorship. And the fact that I paid a lot of money to do it. <laughs> I actually tried to block anything negative out of it because I felt like then it was just a waste of time and money for me, and it wasn't. I actually learned a whole lot in this experience, and it made me a better business owner and mentor myself. But here's what I realized was missing for me when I was being mentored. There was no community or culture. You can go to the next slide, Alyssa. My mentor was incredibly busy, and she didn't create an environment for me to work with my peers. She didn't take the time to learn my specific needs, and she taught in generalities. Now that is being coached. There was no praise or even acknowledgments for that matter. So guess what? Guess what? <laughs> I have learned to become a very good mentor because I went through that myself. Now because of this coach or this mentor doing that for me, I make sure that I do create a community or a culture, that I do praise my coaches as often as I can, and I recognize and I reward them as much as I can. And that is mentoring, not coaching. So I want you to know that the difference between the two is um, we will talk about in just a minute the expectations that it takes to know the difference between coaching somebody and mentoring them and how um, you decipher those two and you spend your time with the 20 percent of those people who have actually earned your time and the, with those newer coaches and your veteran coaches as opposed to these brand new coaches who will be successful all by themselves with a little bit of coaching from you on learning how to use those three vital behaviors to start their business so you can go ahead and go Alyssa all right, guys. So I know you guys are probably. All right, guys. So I know you guys are probably. What is that all about? What is that all about? Like hearing an echo. Do you guys hear an echo, Melissa? Do you hear that? No, um, it sounds fine to me. Okay. All right. I was like, whoa. Okay. Um, so I know you guys have heard the term, the speed of the leader, or the speed of the pack, and I believe that expectations start with you. So one of the really, really important things is that we've got to do some self evaluation. Before we ask our team to do something, I think it's important that we take a hard look at ourselves and ask ourselves these questions. And it just starts really basic. But, you know, are you following a workout program? Are you drinking your shake? Are you doing personal development? Are you inviting, sharing, adding new contacts, tracking your business? 
Um, and then gets a little bit more in depth, right? Are you hitting Success Club every month? Are you rank advancing regularly? Are you providing your own coach trainings, team calls, coach opportunity calls, sponsoring new coaches every month and setting monthly business goals? Because if you're not doing these things, you cannot ask your team to be doing them as well. And they are going to watch what it is that you're doing. So I really think that it's important that you do a little bit of self-reflection. How many times do we say, you know, I really want to attract these rock star coaches or I really want to find more leaders? And oftentimes it's a direct reflection of where we're at in our business, right? you might get somebody that comes along out of almost a fluke and um, you are able to sponsor them. But I have noticed being in the business for three years that the coaches that are in my second business center um, have much more uh, drive and determination um, and more entrepreneurial skills. And that's only because of me developing within myself. So what we want to ask our teams, we always want to make sure that we're leading from the front and that we're doing these things. I know, you know, sometimes we'll look at our downlines as leaders and we'll go, okay, we have diamond coaches who aren't hitting success club, but yet they're encouraging their own coaches to hit success club. So guys, make sure that you're doing these things first because that's where the expectation is going to lie um, beyond anything else that you guys are going to learn in this training that always, always has to start with you. And the beautiful thing about that is that you guys can always be improving yourselves. Every leader um, that's created this training, we're always, always leaning, um, learning and trying to improve ourselves through personal development or seminars, um, doing groups like this, surrounding ourselves with people that encourage us to push and lead forward. And so just know the leading doesn't ever stop. The learning never stops. But we have to make sure that what we ask our teams that we're doing as well. All right. So I, beyond you know, what you do to work on yourself and that expectation and leading from the front. I believe that you set expectations with your coaches before you even sponsor that coach. And what do I mean by that? So I'm going to show you guys here just a little bit of example. So here's just the top picture is uh, one of my coach opportunity posts. I want you to show you just a couple words in here. Um, positive attitude, right? Coachable go-getters. Um, these are things that I already put into my posts that I do when I'm doing um, different kind of ads because I want a, to attract a particular type of individual. The same thing goes along with um, when I get on a call with this person. I let them know right away what it is that I'm looking for. Here's a little bit of snippet of a post within our sneak peek, and this kind of sets people up already to be thinking and hitting about Success Club, right? We're looking for go-getters. Um, also, the fact that, um, Oh shoot, I just realized that I copied this same thing twice. Anyways, um, so I'm looking for go-getters. I also set up that they're gonna be looking for that one to three people to join them in the Apprentice Challenge Group that they're going to run with me. So before they even sign up as a coach, I already want them thinking about what the expectations are to be a successful coach. And obviously that one to three people um, is going to help them hit Success Club in that first month of their business. So. Kind of think about that with your marketing. If you want to attract leaders, one, lead by example, by always doing your personal development, improving and working on yourself. And then number two, what do your posts say? Take a hard look at what your posts are saying um, to be able to attract the right kind of person into your business. All right. So um, here's another example of my new coaches. So I expect my new coaches. Emerald and Success Club within the first 30 days of the month. Um, why I feel like Emerald is a decision. Um, it's basically when their business has been opened. And I include this in their coach welcome email that they receive from me. Again, it's emphasizing for them to make that list um, of their 100 people and to start inviting for that one to three people to join me in their coach, in their coach apprenticeship group with me, okay? Next, I have a new coach handbook that I give to all of my coaches. It is laid out in there as well. Emerald, how you hit success club, the importance of success club, the importance of Emerald. Um, in my new coach camp, again, it's emphasized there. Same thing with a new coach checklist that I give to them. So I'm emphasizing it in many different areas to reinforce the importance of success club and the importance of going Emerald and explaining why. A little bit of expectations that I wanna show you guys here. So. As um, your business grows, I know that I remember, you know, talking to my mentor 
Um, my upline is Melanie Mitchell, in case you guys aren't aware. Um, and then when I started working with corporate, and they always told me I had to be really uh, aware of my time, right? And you guys might say, well, I don't really have that big of a team. I'm going to give everybody everything that they need. And the thing is, is that your business is going to grow, and you have to set expectations, and you have to set guidelines along the way because you're not going to be able to um, control everything that happens. You're not going to be able to give everything that you want to other people. And the, the choice, that the, the matter of the fact is, is that you need to be setting expectations and having them meet you in the middle. So I do this right away with my new coaches. I send them a welcome email. And in the welcome email, I ask that they send me back a coach portrait. It's basically um, an about me form. Once I get the about me form is when I will go and schedule a call with them. So I'm looking for little actions for them along the way. And until they, you know, send me back their coach, their coach portrait, then I don't go and set up the next call with them. Okay. Once I get that back, then I give them the information for the second email mail that I send out. Something that I'm looking for within my coaches right away as a new coach, are they running with the training? Are they doing what it is that I'm asking them to be able to do? Are they working on themselves, you know, for, through fitness, through personal development? We have people that come into the business at all different areas. So I need to see something within them that they're showing up. And a lot of times that's just them showing up into the challenge group. Also, um, did they find that one to three people to join in the apprentice challenge group with me? And if they did, then I get on another call with them and we go a little bit more into, again, the importance of Success Club, the importance of Emerald, a little bit on social media. Um, but I have little patterns along the way and little triggers so that I know where people are at. Um, and then at that point, I can check in, ask to make sure they've had anything, but I kind of leave everything in their court um, because again, they're business owners. I want to teach them to take ownership of their business very, very early on within the business because we can't want it more for our coaches than they want it for themselves. And I know that that is really hard. Um, I get pulled into that a lot, you guys. Um, but my energy at the end of last year really, really, I was really, really struggling. I was dealing with some adrenal fatigue myself. And because I was giving so much to all of my coaches, I was literally drained. And um, like Melissa said, she's been in the business now for seven years. And I looked and I said, I can't do this for seven more years. I've got to change some things. And so these are some things that I've been working on. And this is what I want to share with you um, on how I'm doing this. All right, so my Emerald coaches, just so you guys kind of know, um, I talk to my coaches as their leaders already. So once my Emerald sponsor, their first personally sponsored coach, I make sure that they open up their own team page. Why? Because I want my coaches to look at as leaders from the people that they're sponsoring. I don't want them to look at me. Um, they don't know me from anybody else. And so right away, I want to make sure that my coach is looked up to as the leader that they are. They can pull the information that I have within my team pages. Oftentimes, they just share whatever I share with it within that within my groups. They share within their groups. But it's all about their coaches looking to them as the leader. My Emeralds, I expect that they're all running their own challenge groups. I expect that they're inviting to coaching. I expect that they're active in my team pages, getting on calls, hitting success club. And they are also an apprentice in my new coach training group. I run my new coach training groups by myself, but I allow my coaches to peek in and to share and duplicate the information so they can copy the information that I have. They can post it into their group every single day. But again, I want them to be running their own new coach training groups because it's going to reinforce the information that they've learned in their own coach basics. And two, it's also going to help their coaches look to them as the leader. Super, super important that we set our coaches up for success in that way and that they don't become dependent on you um, and that their coaches aren't looking for outside um, influence to try to get education and just try to get mentoring. We want them to be always referred back to that personally sponsored coach. Now, for my pals, I offer, and I'm going to show you guys a cycle in a minute, but I do a three battle behaviors um, groups once my coaches become emerald or a push to diamond group, depending on where they're at. For these coaches, I offer 15-minute power calls if they fit Success Club the month before. Um, I instituted that last year, and I know that it was really scary for me to do that because I thought, oh, nobody's going to want to get on calls. But the truth is, is that when you raise the bar, um, your, your coaches are going to come up to that bar as well. And so my coaches hit Success Club not only for their own business because they understand that it's really important. 
we can't help really coaches that aren't hitting success club, right? Because all it takes to hit success club is to do the three vital behaviors. So if your coach is doing three vital behaviors every month and tracking their business, then they're going to be hitting success club. Beyond that, you know, you can help them within the groups, help them with how they invite, maybe look over what some of their invites might be. But again, your time is really, really precious. So make sure you have some kind of guidelines uh, or requirements put in and built into your system on who is your one-on-one -on -one time. All right, my diamonds, my diamond coaches, I make sure that they're running their own team calls. They're doing their own coach opportunity calls. They're running their own sneak peeks. They're running their team trainings. Um, they're developing that team culture and they're duplicating everything that I have been given to them. They're making sure that they teach that to their teams. Um, again, everything that I have, they're able to use. And I can tell you that I ran my whole first year of my business simply on duplication. I looked at what Melanie Mitchell was doing. I looked at what Lindsay Matway was doing. I took their trainings and I just duplicated it. And so that's the, really the beauty of this business is that you don't have to know everything Thing, but you got to be willing to step out and lead from the front and then my second year of the business is really when I started to creating a lot more things for my team um, because my team is a lot different than Melanie's team and a lot different than than Lindsay's team so just understand that you can fly your coaches can fly as long as you have some kind of duplicatable system now, my diamond coaches, I do leadership Zooms with them every single week. I also offer mentoring calls with them. Um, they have to be hitting Success Club and they have to be building their business. You know, I can't have a diamond that's like flopping in and out of diamond and they're not hitting Success Club. Um, those fallen diamonds, I guess. Um, I, I, I don't spend the half an hour Zoom leadership calls with them until I see that they're showing up in my other opportunities. So I always have some kind of large opportunity for people to join, such as a leadership Zoom, but my one-on-one -on -one mentoring goes for those coaches that are doing the behaviors they really need to be doing to run a business. All right, I'm just gonna quick show you guys what I use. So I use Acuity Scheduler to schedule my calls. As you guys can see, the guidelines are placed right in here. So for a coach power call, it's for my diamonds and my star diamonds. They're, they've got 30 minute calls. My getting started right calls, um, I block those off for an hour. I never need that time. Um, sometimes I actually go over like what a power hour would look like with them during that time to kind of get them started right. Um, and then my coach power calls are for my Emerald coaches with four active coaches and hitting success club um, in the month before. And those are 15 minute calls. One thing that I've done is I make sure um, that when my coaches schedule a call with me, that they fill out this questionnaire. This way I am, um, I am prepared to help them with whatever it is that they need. How many times do you guys get on a call with somebody and you know it almost feels like it's a therapy session? Um, I really feel like it's important that your coaches come to you scheduled with what it is that you guys are going to talk about. What do they need help it with? What do they need to mentor? And so I attach the scheduler that goes right along when they schedule my call. And these are some of the things that I have them ask. Um, you know, are they in a challenge group? What kind of PD are they doing? Do they have a success partner? Um, what are their goals for the month? What do they feel like they're really strong in? Where do they feel like they need to um, some more training in? And then, you know, how much time a day are they working on their business? And then um, the last one, which you guys can't see because I thought it'd be kind of tacky to just have one on there. Um, <laughs> but the last thing is, you know, what is the focus of this call? So that this way I can prepare for the call and it's very focused and my time that I give them, they get out of what it is that they need. All right, a little bit of kind of how I do my trainings, um, and I really feel that the duplication is really the key. So my new coaches, um, whether you guys use a website, whether it's a group, whether it's email, self-led, however your team does it, um, you know, for me, I have kind of a self-led training within a group page because I like to see where people are at, um, but I have them in, in that group. Okay, so after they go from there, they, like I mentioned before, they get a one-on-one -on -one call with me after they have that first challenger. From there, I have Emerald Training. And with my Emerald Training, it's a three battle behavior training group. Within this group, I offer them um, information on, you know, inviting, overcoming objections. We, we work a bit on our social media. Um, you know, we talk about, um, you know, making sure we run our own challenge and showing up and still being that product of the product and really working and developing on themselves, okay? Those coaches, if they're hitting Success Club and they're starting to build, get those 15-minute power calls. Then, and I push to die 
and calls. Um, I can do them multiple different ways, but I either open up a message thread, a group, and again, those coaches get my one-to-one -one calls. My diamonds, they get the leadership Zoom calls as well as one-on-one -on -one calls if they're hitting Success Club and they're building. My star diamonds, they're in leadership Zooms as well. Um, they are collaborating with me, helping me develop more training with the team, giving us ideas of where we see um, our team, where their weaknesses are, uh, where we can help build, um, and they're giving back to the mother team. And really, really, those coaches can pretty much have calls whenever they want to. Um, so I just wanted to show you kind of where my team and, and time is developed within my team. So my emphasis is on those coaches that are building. It's on my new coaches in the beginning, and it's on those coaches that are the diamond and star diamond leaders. All right, um, I just wanted to quick show you guys a little bit of kind of what I offer for everybody. So I do do sneak peeks. I do coach up calls every month. Um, I do respond via voicemail to everybody. I create team calendars. Um, I do weekly team calls. Um, Challenge groups, virtual power hours, we do those once or twice a month. Um, I create a lot of systems and trainings and team websites. So there's a lot of um, opportunity for you to coach, um, like Melissa had referred to. But the difference is your mentoring is really when you're getting on calls and you're doing that one on one. Um, and so just learn to, I just think it's really important that you learn to figure out, you know, who your runners are who gets your time and really set expectations um, so that you are spending your time I'm not a huge time management person. I am a night owl. I do not like to get up early in the morning. Um, but if you don't set expectations with your team, they're not going to know how to respond. They're not going to know how to expect what to expect. And I feel like having this duplicatable system, having people being able to plug into all different areas, and my coaches know, okay, they go from a new coach training to a through better behaviors training to a, um, a push to diamond group to the leadership training. It's very easy for my coaches to then duplicate this with their team. So uh, back to you, Melissa, about your eagle story. Yeah. <laughs> that is an eagle. Um, I did want I did want to share with you guys um, what are my expectations in order to coach and mentor my team. And um, I'll put this on the page. But in order for me to even coach somebody, they have to be active. They have to be present. I have to see that if they're in the challenge groups, that they're they're participating on the team page, they're participating, they're responding to things that I put down. Um, they have to be working on their health. I don't want them getting so caught up in the business that they forget that their health is a priority. And I need them reading their personal development. So without those things, again, I'll say is that they're active, they're present, they're working on their health, and they're reading their personal development, then um, they're pretty much on their own. And I know that sounds harsh, and something that I've had to learn over these last seven years of coaching, but newer coaches have not yet earned your time. And I'm serious, it hurts my heart to say, that, but if you want to protect your business, your sanity, <laughs> your family, and the coaches that have honestly earned your time, you have to have that mantra that, they, that newer coaches who are not putting some skin in the game, do have not earned your time. Now, when it comes to mentoring, they have to at least be an Emerald coach. I need to see that they've gone out there and they've signed up their friend and their mom or their spouse and they've been able to connect with at least one person um, to become a coach with them. They need to not only show up, but they need to help the team. This is where you start seeing these leaders emerge and when they're on the team page, they not only will say thank you or this is great information, but they also give their two cents on how it has worked for them or where it hasn't worked for them and maybe something else that has. Um, of course, they need to hit Success Club and um, they need to start recruiting. So those are the things that, that I look for in order to start mentoring somebody is that they're emerald, they're starting to help the team, they hit Success Club and they recruit. Now, you know, your newer coaches are coached. They're taught the basics and you spend your time pretty much giving them the facts of coaching. But once you start having emerging leaders, you have to understand that those people do take a lot of time. And if I could see your beautiful faces, I'm sure you'd be shaking your head right now. Emerging leaders take a lot of time. And if you see a lot of potential in them, you're gonna have to give them your time. So maybe a call once a week 
on these coaches that are really, really putting in the effort to be successful at this. And then you have your veteran coaches, um, and, and all of you, I'm sure, um, at this point have veteran coaches, and all of the other nine leaders um, in this academy would say that you have too many, and they almost disappear. Um, they get so self-sufficient and so good at what they do that you don't ever hear from them. So you always have to make the effort to reach out to them at least once a week. I mean, Alyssa just said that she reaches out to them once a week, and kudos to you, girl. But at least once a month, you have to reach out to these veteran leaders and offer your mentorship, your friendship, um, any advice. Um, they might get caught up in old habits or they might um, be doing things that are becoming, making them complacent and not pushing hard or in newer places. So always reach out to those veteran coaches, even though they seem to be doing just fine on their own. Um, I can tell you from experience, um, I don't have a whole lot of upline. I have great uplines, but none of them claim me. <laughs> They're, I'm, I'm so many levels down, so I never hear from them. And so to hear from one of them every once in a while would be absolutely wonderful. So if, if you're not doing that, I highly recommend that you do. And if you do, kudos to you, because I think it's very important for your leaders to hear from you, even if they're doing great things on their own. So I, there's two things, because this is kind of probably the only opportunity that I get your undivided attention that I wanted to share with you. And number one is because you are now in a position of leadership with your team, you are, you're the bomb. You know, everybody looks up to you. They are constantly thanking you for your leadership and your help and the fact that you changed their lives and puts you in a position to where you're kind of like, hey, you know, this is good. I'm so happy where I'm at. But I think one of the reasons that has have kept me as an elite coach and a top 10 coach and, um, being able to build um, a lot of diamonds in my organization is the fact that I surround myself with people that force me, <laughs> force me to level up. Um, these these nine ladies in this group, um, it's mind blowing how how amazing they are at this business. And when you don't surround yourself with people that are just as good as, as good as you, or even force you to level up, you tend to get very complacent. So I want to highly encourage you to reach out to people other than your upline that will put you in a position to keep trying things, to changing it up, to pushing just a little bit harder and to making your goals a little bit bigger. I mean, these women dream so big and it keeps me dreaming just as big. I'm at the point in this business that I could probably sit back and go, hey, this is, this is good, I'm comfortable, but, but I'm not, you know, because they remind me every day that there's so many lives out there to change that you just can't, you can't stay where you're at. So in your position of leadership now, please remember that you still want to make sure that you put leaders into your life that, that cause you to keep leveling up as a leader. And Alyssa and I um, decided to go with this, um, the fly theme. And I have something I want to share with you that <laughs> it's, it's going to burn in your brain. And I, I hope it's a positive thing. But I was blown away by this statistic. That, did you know that an eagle can live up to 70 years? But to reach that age, it has to make a very hard decision. At the age of 40, its beak curves, its talons go weak, and, it, and his feathers on his chest get really thick and heavy. So he's left with two options. The first option is to die. The second option is to go through a painful process of change, which lasts 150 days. So what he does if he decides to do that is he goes to the top of a mountain where he knocks his beak up against a rock until it falls off. Once the beak regrows, he starts to pluck out those heavy feathers and he removes his old talons. And after five months, the eagle takes its famous flight of rebirth and lives for another 30 years. Now I think that's amazing, absolutely amazing. And I'm a huge animal lover, so I still feel so sorry for the thing. But I wanna close with you, with you knowing that there's going to be a time as a leader that you're going to have to make a change and you're going to have to take a rest. So you're gonna to have to go to the top of the mountain, you're gonna to have to take a rest, whether it is you know, 
24 hours, whether it's a weekend, maybe you take a whole week off or you take a month off. There's going to be a time that you can't work as hard as you are. And it's okay because what you will have is a rebirth and an opportunity for you to come back even stronger. So coming from somebody who's done this for seven years, please remember that it is okay at one point in time to know that you're going to have to pull back just a little bit and work on yourself and become stronger yourself so that you can continue to be the leader that you need to be to grow such a huge organization. And I know you guys have such big dreams and goals and you're gonna hit them, but please be okay with the fact that, that you have to avoid burnout because it will happen and we don't want that. So be the eagle and go for your rebirth if you have to. And thank you guys so much for this opportunity. And please know the difference between coaching and mentoring is huge in your business and own the fact that people have to earn your time and that coaching is good for the masses. And once people really start to show you their leadership development, that's when you start to mentor them. Awesome. Oh, Melissa, that story of the eagle. Oh, that poor thing. You had me like in tears. I was going to cry. I'm sorry. I get emotional about that stuff. So, all right, you guys, thanks so much. Um, if you guys have any questions about what it is that we went over today on the webinar, please post in the leadership group. I'll start a thread as soon as the call ends. Um, if you guys have any questions, I will also make sure that I upload the slides for you guys so you guys have the slides. And just remember this, you guys, you cannot serve the masses. Okay, you really have to identify who are those people that deserve your mentorship and to just safeguard your time. We can want it for everybody, but also, at the same time, we can't give ourselves to everybody, right? You're not going to be as effective if you try to give to everybody. I've done it, you guys. I've run through adrenal fatigue twice since I started this business. So please learn from me um, and safeguard. Love all, you know, love your whole team. Um, I think that that's super important. Give them opportunity, but really, really safeguard on who you provide that mentorship to um, until they show you that they're really, really ready for it. So um, thanks, you guys, so much for hopping on with us. We really appreciate it. I know that um, your time is valuable, so we're going to end the call, and uh, we can continue this into the group. So, all right, bye. Thanks, Melissa. Bye. You look gorgeous as always, my sister. Ah. Bye, babes.